now, every time I come and see Lady, it's always the same old game. I've got to catch her, yet yeah, it's easier said than done. And you're not allowed to catch it. That's no. right. So you're not allowed to catch it. <laughs> You've got eyes on him. Yes. <laughs> oh. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. So we're going to be doing an annual health check on these guys today. Yeah. So... And to do that... We're going to need to catch them. Of course we are. One thing I do remember about sheep is they can be quite feisty, they can be quite grumpy, and they're very good at kicking. Number five. My mate Jason's called from Hunter Valley Zoo. He's asked me to come up because he needs some help with sheep. What could he need help with sheep for? But one thing's for sure, whenever Jace calls, it's always interesting, and I'm betting today will be no different. Tim Faulkner is taking time out from his role as general manager at the Australian Reptile Park and is heading north into the Hunter Valley, where zoo owner Jason and his team are ready to get going. Morning, boys. Morning, Timmy. How are you, mate? Good. Come on in, mate. We've got a challenge for you. Boys are already down at the yard. Where's my cup of tea? I turn up and it's straight into it. How are you, mate? Good. Here to help. Oh, why so many people for sheep? We're called Barbary sheep. Where are they? Over in the, in the far corner, they're already onto us. Great, Barbary sheep. Now it all makes sense. You can always rely on Jace to come up with a doozy like this. Look at the horns. Especially that big boy, he's about 90 kilos. That explains why there's so many people. Yep. We've got a bit of an outside the box job for Tim today. We've got to catch our Barbary sheep. The big guy needs his hoofs trimmed and just the regular vaccination and worming and stuff like that. And one of our females hurt her eye a few weeks ago. So she needed a patch put on it, so we've got to actually have a squeeze under that patch and see how the eye's travelling. So we need to have a couple here, use the dam as our divider. So we'll leave three on this side and take three around that side. Yep. The plan is for the team to fan out and herd the sheep into a holding pen, where the procedures can be carried out safely. OK. So we'll just push them nice and gentle. Oh, they're on to us, mate. Barbary sheep are native to the mountain regions of North Africa. All right, try and keep them moving, guys. Cut them off, cut them off. Ah, oh, these are hard, aren't they? Barbary sheep are really dangerous. They've got a massive set of horns, know how to use them. And if you're in front of them, they won't stop. They'll just plough straight over the top of you. Move up, boys. It will go another big swoop. We'll go right around, bring it around to you guys. Come up, Shani, Rodney. Try and push them around now. Come on. It's up to us now, mate. Here we go. Come on. It's obvious this is not working. I hope Jace has got another plan. You know, most sheep are stupid. These guys are switched on. They're switched they know on. the drill. So, what do you do? It's time to bring out the big guns. I'm already here. I mean, the real big guns. Yeah? What's yeah. that? I'll show you. Right go on. have a look. Got. We're going to bring out the big guns, I said. Whoa. Get a load of this puppy. What is that? It's called a net gun. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim is helping round up Barbary sheep. They're in need of a health check. We've done a couple of laps around the yard and so far it's not going to plan. They know what the, the holding pen means and they just don't want to go in there. So now it's time for plan B. So it shoots out a four by four metre net. Yeah, I can guess that by the name of it. And so, how close can you get? You've got to get within 15 or 20 metres. But as soon as this net lands over the head, you've got to get there as fast as you can. Get a hold of the horns, the deadly bit, get the net off the animal, get it up to the yards and we can process it from there. I don't know, mate. Well, I'm no Usain Bolt, but... All right, I'll give it a crack. Best. I'll give it a crack. All right, well, the big guy running that year, I'm sure you will be. Yeah, All right, OK. let's get into it. Well, that gun's a great idea, but the sheep still has horns. It's still 90 kilos. It's still running very fast, and once the net's over it, we've still got to get into the sheep and restrain it. I'd like to think it goes as smoothly as it sounds. So keep moving. Whoop. Oh, close. So firing the net gun is all about teamwork. So the barber sheet are flying past you. They're going at Mach 10. So the idea is to pull the trigger at the right moment, get the net to land perfectly over, do a nice wrap, then it's up to the other guys to run in and really get the animal quick. Righto. Whew, another miss. Jace needs to pick up his act. Alright, try and keep it moving, guys. 
Got him? Yep, I'm got him. Big male presents himself. Bam, perfect shot. Straight over his head, wraps him up, and in come the guys. He's a powerful animal. Good shot, mate. Thanks, mate. All right, we've got to get him untangled now, the tricky bit. Finally, we got him, the big boy. It's all hands on deck. Whoa, 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 whoa. As the net comes off, it has to be peeled from the back all the way up and then over the horns. Now, as that's happening, he feels a lot freer. Right, we got one. That's when he gives a kick. Three feet out. Back. Whoop. Timmy, can you jump on another leg, please, mate? Right. Lift yep. his leg up. Yep. Get and the front. Net. Drag it forward. Forward? Yep. Yep. Free. Are we free? Yep. All right, guys, now we're going to do the business then. He builds up like a reptile. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coming this way. Here we go. Right, I'll take that with you, mate. Peel it off. Now we've caught him. That part's done and done well. But we've got to walk him all the way up to the yard and get him inside to be able to process him. One slip at this moment, he'll feel a bit of freedom and he'll bolt. Easy fella. So now he's free, guys. Let go, Daniel. Boys can lead him on. Yep. Jeez. God, he's strong. He's strong, isn't he? At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim is helping staff lead an extremely stubborn sheep up into the yards. Easy, fella. All right, you're right, going to run ahead and get everything ready for him. OK. So the danger now is he's going to use those really large horns and his powerful build to lever us around, push the boys around. And if you get in the wrong spot, he can hook you with those, those big horns and he'll do you some serious damage. You are right out there, guys? Whoop, 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 whoop. He wants to go forward whoop, now. Whoop. He's on me. Going in shade there, Jase? Yeah, mate, yeah. Now we've got him in the yard, we need to give him a vaccination, a drenching, and trim the hooves. Once we've done that, we can put him into a holding yard. First up is the drench. Along the back? Yeah, mate, yeah. Done. Followed by the vaccination. Ready? One squirt. Done. Beautiful, mate. Thank you. Beauty. Now the team needs to address the overgrown hooves. All right, Rodney is our head hook trimmer. So what I might get you to do, Timmy, is to hold the legs up. I'll take over from Rodney. Yep. And I'll slip in there behind you guys. One at a time, or hold One at a time, mate. Yeah, we'll just do... Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rodney and I let go for one second, and he's off. Boom! Right into Jace. <sighs> you right? Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> so we're swapping over. I'm taking over Rodney's spot on the front of the sheep, because he's going to do all the hoof trimming. And bam, drives me straight up the yards. We really took the wind out of me. Okay, right good on you. As Jason catches his breath, Tim and Rodney yep. get on with the hoof trim. So they're a bit long, hey? Uh, so you just trim those up? Just trim them up so they're flat on the bottom of that foot. In their natural environment, sheep's hooves would wear down on rocky surfaces. Good, two done. Next foot. But on the soft Hunter Valley turf, they become overgrown. Okay, last foot. Doesn't hurt him at all, eh? He's just in no, like just fingernails. Like your fingernails or your toenails. <laughs> Looking good. There we go, done. Right, Timmy, you're right to get in there, mate. Yep. Righto, spin around to your left. I'm gonna open the door. Watch this. Oh, oh, it's off. One slip at this moment, he'll feel a bit of freedom and he'll bowl. One, two, two three, two. and he goes. Quick. Well done, everyone. Well How done, good boys. was that? How well was well that? Well done. How strong is he? Jeez. It's a bit out of the comfort zone, isn't it? A bit different to the venomous snake. Give me a dance with a venomous snake any day. Yeah. So one down. Another one to go. Okay. Yep. All right, let's go. Great. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim is helping round up Barbary sheep. Make a change direction, she'll step in it. With the big male safely out of harm's way in the holding yard, it's now time to catch the feisty female. There we go. Ah, nice job, Abes. You were in there, bud. Hey? Body on the line. Sorta of got her, but it's off. We need to go again. Oh, close. Very close. After another shot off target. Righto. It's third time lucky. Now it's up to all of us to get in there and get us safely up to the holding area. Right. Yep. What a catch. Once the female is successfully moved to the holding pen, the team can get to work. She needs the same treatments as the male had, but she's had an old injury to the eye that's had a patch over it. So the patch needs to come off, assess the eye, and see if it needs more treatment. 
a little bit of an ulcer on the eye there, but it's not bleeding, it's a lot better than what it was, so I reckon we're gonna leave it off the heel. We'll catch you again in another couple of weeks just to keep an eye on her in the paddock. So it was no. worse than that, the patches yeah. let it let it calm down. Yep, it's not it irritated. Down, no, it's not irritated. Now it needs some sunlight and fresh yep. air. Yep. Eyes looking great. If we haven't got to repatch it again, it can now just do the rest of its healing by itself. Next one. After administering drench and vaccinations, it's good. back, Tim's now checking her hooves. How are the hoofs, Timmy? Uh, the front oh, two were good. good. Okay. A little bit on the back, not bad, but. He's had a bit of a rough trot with that bad eye, so I'm glad there's nothing else wrong with her. Done? Alrighty. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll put the female in with the male. We're gonna let them settle and just make sure they're right. In. Beauty. Well Ooh. done, how was that? Jeez, mate, I'm glad it's over. It went well, didn't it? The females in with the male. They need to settle for a few minutes. We get to take a breath and absorb in what's just happened and then we'll release them. Oh, cool, what's the plan? Let him straight out, Debbie. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna jump behind that gate. Yeah, he's gonna come out of here like a bullet of gate. You ready? Coming. They were as quick taken off as they were to catch. Oh, weren't they? Straight out of there, as soon as they saw that open gate. Thank you, mate. Thanks Ace, for coming up, mate. Ah, Give you a cup of tea now after you had your run around, you did a daily exercise. You reckon I've earned it? Yeah, you have. Number four. So while you're here, Chris, I've got one more thing I need a hand with. Is it this size? No, definitely not. At Mogo Zoo, the team is making the most of the visiting vet from Bondi. Just when I thought my work here was done and I could dust myself off and clean myself up, oh no, turns out it's something even more dangerous that Sam has in mind. Here. What am I doing here? Well, you're going to catch up with Jen, one of our keepers, yep. of the world's bitiest mammal. So I'd strongly suggest that you take these with you. The gloves. The gloves. Through the no entry door. Through the no entry door. Perfect. Are you coming in? I'm not coming in, I'm staying out here. I'm going to listen for the screams. We'll see about Make those sure screams. you put those gloves on. <laughs> Good luck. Logo's renowned for its big cats, but a pair of gloves as my only protection. I'm not sure this is a good idea. <laughs> Meerkats, of course. You must be Jen. I am, how are you today? I'm good. I've been sent up here, but what are we doing? So we're gonna be doing an annual health check on these guys today. Yeah? So and to do that? We're going to need to catch them. Of course we are. Okay, how exactly is that going to happen? Well, they are fairly curious animals, so yep. I'm hoping that we can get the majority of them to pop in this pet pack. All right, I'll put this down here. Of course, it's meerkats. Now, I've had some experience with these guys in the past, and I know they can either play nice or they can play nasty. Oh, it's the really good stuff. Ah, that was my hand. Gaining the trust of meerkats doesn't come easy, so Jen has a few pointers for Chris let them know who he is first to start off with and that he's not a threat. And then once Chris has become a friend of theirs, then they should trust him and kind of jump into that pet pack just fine. Here, look at this. Ready? Look. In there. It's almost like they know something's going on. Yeah, they do. Here, here, here. here you go. Okay, guys, you ready? Look, the idea look. is to catch all nine meerkats. Don't be suspicious. But nothing is going to plan. Okay, guys. Look at this. Ready? Look. Here. Here. At Mogo Zoo, Chris is struggling to round up nine Here. meerkats that are in need of their annual vaccinations. Ready? Four's okay. Getting better. Do I go too early? Oh, they're still looking curious. We might be able to have another shot at it. To achieve the full quota of meerkats, Chris is going to have to change tack. All right. Look at this. What I've got. Look. So that's the father of the group, Jahina, that you've got right there. Right there. So he's the dominant male. He's yeah. almost five now. So if I can get him, I can get most the of the group. The others do tend to follow hey, you. Hey, Jahina. Jahina. Look. Look. Okay, so the trick seems to be to get Jahina, the dominant male, into the pet pack first. Do that, and the rest should follow. Hopefully. Here, here, here. In here. There we go. In there. What in there. All the good stuff's in there. Yeah, 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 look, look, look. <laughs> Lovely, nice work. Somehow I've managed to lure all nine meerkats into a pet pack. 
But if I'm ever gonna push their patience, it's through what I have to do next. Vaccinate them, worm them, and then to really push the friendship, an oral examination. Bring on patient number one. So normally, I have 15 minutes to do this and just talk to the owners <laughs> about how the day's been. <laughs> you know, get to know their animal, a bit of small talk, and all of a sudden, it's different here. I know, you're not happy, are you? The meerkats are vaccinated each and every year against parvovirus, which is exactly the same virus that your dog can catch. You'd think they'd be a little bit more grateful. Okay, so you can just do a quick mouth check. Okay, open wide. Oh, wow, see? It's not nice, is it? That wooden tongue depressor is in the meerkat's mouth for less than a second, but it comes out shredded. 84, Ouch. yes. A bit more dangerous than the rhinos. Okay, so the worming stuff's just there. Yep. So 0.1 of a mil. Yep. There you go. All right, so she can go. Fast. It's just in and out. With the meerkats clearly unimpressed, it's important Chris and Sam complete the job as quickly as possible. The meerkats are quite um, used to people, but it's all on their own terms. So as soon as we actually try and grab them, then they become quite bitey. You're ferocious, aren't you? How many teeth in such a small mouth? This is one of those situations where looks are incredibly deceiving. A meerkat seems adorable, but when those teeth get moving, they are ferocious. Really good tea, mainly because I think she uses the tea so often. Yeah. <laughs> Just one more meerkat to go, and it's the feistiest of the lot. What's this one's name? Johanna. So this is dad to all of them. Dad. You can see there he's you taught go, them buddy. all how to bite. You've <laughs> done a good job of it. You should be very proud, Dad. Wow. Yep. Teeth work. This big, aggressive male is itching for a fight. The closest thing to this is a chihuahua. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of flashbacks. You're not related to the chihuahua, but... Jeez, you put on a similar show. You're doing dog impressions? I'm getting a dog vaccination, so it makes sense. Good boy. There you go. Okay, that's it. Nine meerkats, done. How long did that take? 15 minutes? I think it was about 11. <laughs> well, I've got to say, considering the collateral damage, yes. Yes. it's actually all right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good effort. Could have been a finger. Chris has done a fantastic job with our meerkats and no bites for the vets, which is also another record. Fantastic. All right, good. Well, I'm going to take this gear out and um, leave you to release them and hopefully rebond with them. I'll just... Yes, you might need those. In the those. back pocket, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Wherever you go in the world, everyone seems to love meerkats. So it's good to know that the Mogo meerkats have got a clean bill of health. I know what you're looking at. You're looking at me and my fingers, but it's a happy ending. This has been a good outcome. You guys are healthy. I'm healthy. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, here we go. This week's number three. Scott's next job is with Vet David at a local sheep and cattle farm. Okay. What? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. All right. Hi, I'm Scott. Uh, How you doing? Good. Scott, good. this is Hugh. Hey, Hugh. Oh, How are you? Good, thanks. So I'm guessing uh, cattle here? No, we're down here. What's yeah. down here? Oh, this cover looks, Scott. Here they are. Okay, sheep. Yep. Seeing that my patients are sheep, it does make me quite nervous. We don't have many sheep running around the fields of Richmond. <laughs> yes, we've got two rams here. Okay. And Hugh has also come along to turn them into teaser rams for him. That means that we need to give them a rather indelicate cut, don't we? Yep. Yeah. A teaser ram is basically produced when they get a vasectomy. That means that they can no longer make babies. So basically, they encourage all the ewes to cycle at the same time so that when the real ram comes in, all the females are receptive and then the lambs are born around about the same time of the year. Scott, while you catch them, I'll go get my gear ready. 
These rams are quite tough and, and they're quite agile. And Scott has got his work cut out. Good luck. Good luck. I can relate, boys. My wife's trying to convince me to do exactly the same thing we're about to do on them. Ouch. OK. Let's go. Come on. One thing I do remember about sheep is they can be quite feisty, they can be quite grumpy, and they're very good at kicking. He's bloody strong. In Wales, Scott is trying to catch a ram so he can perform a vasectomy. Hey, Scott, you're yeah. the wrong one there. <laughs> Hugh is a classic example of a Welsh farmer. Great sense of humour, great fun, very hospitable. Not funny, Hugh, not funny. <laughs> but more than happy to let the city boy go in and look like a fool. <laughs> OK, come on, mate. Wait. wait. He's not the best at handling sheep, I'm not saying, catching them, but he managed, just about. It was a bit funny, it was a bit entertaining. I wouldn't want to go over there either if I was you. Come on. He really heard what we said we were going to do to him. You can tell he's not keen. <laughs> on a farm, we have to make do with what we've got. So using a hay bale as a surgical table is all we've got. And obviously it's not the most sterile environment, but we wash up and we scrub up and we clean things as best we can. Right, so if you feel the cord, Scott, you can feel the, um, the part you want to cut out, the vas deferens underneath there. Yeah, so you've got the spermatic cord, which is the blood supply and also the tube that allows the sperm to come to the outside, and that's yes. the one we want to cut. That's the one we want to cut. But there's a whole lot of blood vessels coming down here, so we have to avoid the blood vessels. Mm. Otherwise... Yeah, complications. Mm. There we are. See, it is quite a delicate operation, isn't it? Yeah. Just in there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I think, I think, you, I think you've got it now. That's it. Yeah. That, that, that nice white fibrous cord. Bring that out. And then... Okay. okay. Should we close this boy up? Right. The name is Ram Scott now, then. That's right, I think so. You're going to name it Scott now. <laughs> oh. De definitely. Yeah. Okay. It's got no chance of having any lambs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy. Come on, get. Come on, Come on good boy. There we go. Good well boy. Well done. Oh. He'll soon recover, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Number two. I think it's fair to say it's probably the most exclusive residence you like to do a house call to. She's looking forward to your visit, I'm sure. Sorry, Always loves a cuddle get, from Chris. I always get nervous when I ever see my uh, <laughs> special lady. Yes. Well, there she is now. Looking good, too. How do I look? Am I okay? <laughs> I'm sure she'll be impressed. Oh, she's, she's still ready. got it. She's ready. What a lady. Lady's been here with us at Vaucluse for a long time. The head gardener remembers when Lady arrived and he's now in his 18th year of service, so we think that Lady must be the second longest serving employee of, of Vaucluse's house. How's she been lately? Oh, she's still a little stiff, Chris, but, um, you know, we were hoping he could just check her over and reassure us that, you know, it's all, all normal for a girl of her age. Mm. She looks like a few ladies I've seen after, you know, a big day at the races when they're a bit sore in the feet. She's, <laughs> she's got the splayed legs there. Well, yeah, they do bow out a fair bit, don't yeah. they? But yeah. um, she gets around all right when, when she needs to. Mm. You can actually see how front hooves are bent over. It makes her walk like a muscle man or I guess a, a muscle lady. Now, the issue with that is that she's actually going to start wearing down just one side of the joint and eventually arthritis is going to take hold and she may, in the future, just not be able to walk at all. Now, Naomi, is that a smile of excitement that she's seeing a favourite man, do you think? Or? I'd call that poking her tongue out, Chris. <laughs> just delighted. <laughs> I think she's being cheeky. Let's try and catch her and see how she. All right, let's give it a close. shot. This is always tricky, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, 
Now, every time I come and see Lady, it's always the same old game. I've got to catch her, yet it's easier said than done. Shown up by a 19-year-old goat, that's a bit embarrassing, come on. In some ways, I feel sorry for her. She's this old goat and there's, she's got this big vet chasing around a paddock. But you look at her face, and I assure you, half the time, she's laughing at me. Okay, you want pace? I'm gonna give you pace. Oh, I seriously reckon I've used up some of my best ever rugby tackles on the old girl. There you go. Might just get my breath back first, girl. There's love there. I just think it's incredible how old Lady is. Goats in the wild would only live to around seven years of age, whereas Lady's 18 or even 19. She's got to be some sort of record breaker. Oldest goat in Australia, oldest goat in the world, who knows? But she is incredible. Let's bring her over here. And what we'll do is we'll just put her on a side here. Now, she's an old girl, so I don't want to do it too rough, but there we go. If you can just get you to hold those bottom legs there. Yeah, like this. Yep. Okay. Oh, she's pretty relaxed. She is. She likes you. <laughs> Maybe not quite as much as she did before after that. <laughs> Let's have a look, girl. She, she's got a, it's a beautiful smile, isn't it? <laughs> she's now 18. It, it's, it's great she's actually still got her teeth, because a lot of them wouldn't even have teeth left. And her eyes are nice and clear, so yeah, she's got eyes. full sight. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, she's doing OK. Her eyes are clear, her teeth are pretty good, and those horns, yeah, they're still beautiful and sharp. Just the issue is those front legs. The arthritis is still making her quite stiff and uncomfortable. So what have you noticed? You've noticed, noticed she's, she's limping? Well, just that she, you know, seems to really take her time getting up from the ground. It seems that she's quite stiff when she stands up from a sitting position. And then, you know, the first few steps she takes, she'll, she'll limp a little yeah. before she kind of gets going. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing you can see is the hooves have really bent over. Sure. Now, the hooves are always going to grow, and what they normally do is grow straight down. Right. But because of her posture, the, the weight's actually not going through the, the hoof evenly, and so it's pushing the, the hoof growth off to one side. Now that's a problem because when they are bent over like that, the weight doesn't go through this joint, this joint or this joint evenly. It's pushed off to one side. And as she gets older, things like arthritis can really become an issue. And if she's putting all her weight through just one side of the joint, then that's going to be a big, a big issue for her. Oh dear lady. We'll just have a feel of her, each of her joints here. That joint there is really stiff. There doesn't seem much move. There's just almost none at all. I mean, you can maybe, yeah, see the difference there? See that one there? There's a lot of movement there. Then you go to this one, right. and that's it. Yeah. Just years and years of, I guess, being a goat. Um, it, it's nothing that, that could really have been prevented. It's just the fact she is actually living so long yeah. that her joints are getting, getting a little bit worn out. So the cartilage has, has been worn down as a result. Extra bones produced, the joint becomes a bit fibrosed, uh, a, bit, um, yeah. a bit seized up. So, look, hopefully we can help that out today. What I might do is actually do something that we normally do on horses. Okay. She doesn't look like a horse, I know, but it's actually a nerve block. So I'm going to inject some local anaesthetic down the back of this leg here. What it's actually going to do is, is absorb into the nerves and block out any pain, any discomfort, coming from the bottom part of these legs here. If you can eliminate any paint coming from down here, then how she walks is how she'll walk if we can eliminate all the pain from that leg. Oh, fabulous, uh, okay. If you can just hold her there, just keep yeah. hold of those bottom, bottom legs there. So I'm now gonna use a nerve blocker, which is something we normally use on horses. The idea here is just to numb out one particular area of her leg. If then she walks normally, then that's where the pain's been coming from and that confirms our diagnosis that arthritis has been the cause all along. All right, so all I need to do is just give her a little bit of a, of a shave down the sides here. On both legs. Now what we do is we get some local anaesthetic just drop a few mils of that. Let's clean up the skin here. Get rid of any bugs. We inject the local anaesthetic right next to the nerve. Okay. And the nerve for the, the hoof here runs, there are two of them, they run down either side of the back of the, the leg there. Oh, she's and a good girl. Jump. I just inject a lot, 
and it's taking around the back of that. And then on the other side. What we'll do, we'll just give that a chance to, to sink in and, and soak in around the nerve there. Yeah. Once that does, then obviously we're gonna block out any of the messages the nerve to the bottom of the foot here is gonna, gonna send around. It's almost falling asleep. All right, so she can stand up. Don't you can get, get up, girl. Up, now. up you get. Do you wanna get up or? No, she says keep massaging. Come on, up you get. There we go. So we'll just take a little while. And how's my girl going? Mercedes has settled right in. She's um, been making friends with the ducks. There's actually an added bonus when I come to see Lady. One of my former pets actually lives here. Mercedes the chicken. The other chickens weren't as welcoming, but the ducks certainly seem to have accepted her. Had nothing to do with the way I brought her up, the fact she thinks she's a duck, Naomi. <laughs> Mercedes actually lived with me in my last house in Bondi, which had this big backyard. She used to lay so many eggs, but when I moved, I had to find a new home for her, and I thought Voiclu's house would be perfect. Now, Naomi, you've got to ask, what has happened to my chicken? Oh, she's grown up a lot, hasn't she's, she? She hasn't grown up. She thinks she's a duck. <laughs> I still think she actually feels bad about the fact I'd left her when I moved out. I had no choice. <laughs> Way to greet your father. <laughs> huh? He's no spring chicken. <laughs> no spring chicken, another old girl. <laughs> He's got a good party trick though, hang on. <laughs> we'll put her over in the shade here. If the ducks see this, they might never <laughs> accept her in again, but you ever seen a chicken hypnotise? I've heard that you can do it. Yeah. So what you do is you lie them, you lie them flat. You tuck their head in and you stroke them down the middle. So this obviously isn't distressing her? No, I feel her heart's very relaxed. <laughs> they can pick up when people are being cynical or in any way sceptical <laughs> as well, so that never works. You have when to have faith in this do. party trick. You, do. you can do this to any chicken. Yep. Yeah, slower. And slower. And slower. She's now just dreaming of those beautiful times we used to spend together, reminiscing. She stay like that. Long enough. And that's a hypnotised chicken. Yep. Hypnotising chooks is a real art form. They might look as though they fight it a little bit at the start, but eventually they enjoy it. They go into this deep state of relaxation. And I've got to say, Mercedes is one of my best subjects. Mercedes, you're making a goose yourself. Get up. That's raised the um, curiosity of those ducks. We've never seen that before. <laughs> Oh, look at that running. See, she's going okay though. I think she's definitely moving more freely. I'd have to agree. Which way are you gonna go? Naomi, oh, you've learnt. Look at that. <laughs> I used to just go for the horns. I've now realised it's more of a it's, matter of body weight. There's isn't no it? point being gentle around here. Okay. You got her? Yeah, I've got her. So I'll walk her over here. <laughs> Come on, let me get. There we go. Walk with me. So that was pretty important to see because what it showed us is the fact that certainly she walks a bit more freely when the pain's taken away. So that indicates she's most likely got arthritis there. Yeah. But you see, she still has that difficulty walking because her hooves are off balance. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really angled in. So, desperate times. Can we times. trim them or something? Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. And you might be a bit surprised by this, but we're actually going to call in the heavy artillery. What do you mean? You'll see. You just come with me. Come on. Oh, okay. The other plan of attack is something, well, a little left field. If she's a lady, she'll love this. Okay. You ready, girl? Big surprise coming. Yeah, I don't think she loves the power tool idea. You can almost see her face, she's looking at you going, what the hell is this guy doing now? But it will help, it's gonna even off those hooves and make sure she walks nice and upright and distributes her weight evenly. All right, so we're probably about halfway there on this foot. It just takes, it takes so long. But what we're 
uh, trying to get it's about five millimetres off, off the side there just to try and straighten up the foot. Now I should say, and probably should have said this before, but it's the first gut I've done this on. Oh, you're experimenting on our lady. Wouldn't dare experiment on lady, but we do this quite often on cows. Okay. And, and occasionally on horses, they put up with the noise, but um, we could say it's an Australian first on the goat. <laughs> All right, there you go. So she's got her nice new shoes there. So instead of having her big masculine arms that she had before, she's gonna have nice, long, lady-like legs. So that's done half the job, but the second part is we need to actually sort out that arthritis. So the arthritis is what's causing the pain. Yeah. You can have a look through all sorts of vet text books on goats, and they never mention arthritis. So we've had to be a little bit inventive. And the way we've done that is by using a dog arthritis medication. Oh dear, a dog. So we're calling our lady a dog just for the moment. But this is very safe to use in goats. Okay. So we're actually going to give her three tablets each day. Yep. And that's just going to take the inflammation out of her joints. And now she's walking on the new shoes, she's going to be a lot happier. I see a big improvement. Now Naomi, I guess we've got our tablets, but how do we get the tablets into lady? I, I usually use something like molasses and ground the tablets up. Well, oh, she's never been a big fan of molasses, Chris. No sweet tooth? No, she she doesn't seem to like it. You like? You reckon she likes beans, though? Beans are her favourite. We pick okay. them for her often from the garden. Yes, yes, you just dote on her, don't you? <laughs> we try to. No wonder she doesn't let me tackle her. She's got That's that right, ego going on. This is a huge one. You okay. can... That's where you're going to snap it. Yeah. Pop it out. Woohoo. You're good with this. <laughs> <laughs> and just pop it in there. I reckon. I believe me, she'll just wolf that down. It's just like edamame. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so hang on to that. I'll hold those. If I don't come back, just give my <laughs> regards to the family. <laughs> it's different this time. You know, we've been through everything, giving you your treatment. You know, I'm here for you, not for me. So I was just thinking maybe we could talk about this and I've got a bean for you. No, we can't even write. It's like this, is it? Come on. Oh, good step. That was a good step. Which one? Which one? Which one? Oh. Oh, yes. There we go. Okay, now, this is a giving moment. Huh? Nothing nasty here. Little bean. Oh, then I'll just tie that little tablet a bit more. Little bean, what you might like. Huh? She's eating it. She is. Should we reward her with another one? A one without a tablet in it? <laughs> huh? Right. Oh, she can't resist, can she? Okay, we've given her a good massage, a pedicure, and some pain relief, and she looks like she's running a lot more comfortably. But let's face it, the whole goal here is to keep this record breaker going, and you never know, one day she might just see her 21st birthday. All right, Naomi, thank you. Thank you, Chris. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank you on behalf of Lady. <laughs> no worries, we'll see you again soon, huh? Yeah, that's, that's good. Cheers. And this week's number one. We've had a call from a couple from Buckety, and they've got what they've described as a death adder, and it's actually in their front yard, so I'm gonna go and grab it. We can use it for the Venom program. Australian Reptile Park Operations Manager, Tim Faulkner, is responding to an SOS call from the New South Wales Central Coast. You got yourself a snake? Yeah, yeah, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. You think it's a death adder? Death adders? Uh, responsible for a number of bites each year and very capable of killing a person. They have uh, neurotoxins that effectively put your body into paralysis and you will die. Number eight, most toxic snake in the world. Yep. Yeah. So You're we mad. won't be picking them up anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> I hope not. No. He picks them up, which I don't like, and then drives them away. I don't like it because if he gets bitten, I've got to get him to a hospital and it's an hour's drive. You've got thongs on, so yes. please stay there, and you're not allowed to catch it. That's no. right. So you're not allowed to catch it. <laughs> You've got eyes on him. Yes. <laughs> the easiest thing's just to do this. They're near impossible to spot. Maybe I need my glasses on. That's perfect for them. That's what they love, these banks here leaves. I get nervous looking for adders. The adder's somewhere. And you can't see No, you don't know where it is. A death adder 
doesn't have the ability to take off very quickly like we assume most snakes do. They're short and stocky. They, they, they can't just crawl away. He's going to hold his position. He thinks he's camouflaged. If your hand goes too close, you're bitten. See? No. He's here somewhere. Back in Buckety on the New South Wales Central Coast, Tim is still on the hunt for a notorious killer. The death hatter knows we're here. He can sense us. He would have known we're here from the moment we started to walk down this track. But he's going to hold tight. Please be careful. Yeah, I will. Des and Gavin spotted a death adder in their garden earlier today. But so far, there is no sign of the deadly snake. It looks like it's yeah, gone to me. No, he'll be there. They're just perfect. They, they camouflage so well. OK, I've spotted him. Just stay there. Yep. You're not going to believe it. There's the head. Where? Right underneath my hook. There he is. There's the head. See? Yep. You know, they've got one of the fastest strikes of any snake on Earth. Mm. I'll bring him out on the flat there and we can have a look at his tail. That's amazing. There we go. I hope that Gavin Des get something out of this too, and not just that the snake's gone, but that Gav stops picking them up. Des keeps an eye on him and she's careful in the garden because 99 times out of 100, people are bitten by catching the snake, poking the snake or trying to move it. It's not the person that leaves it alone that gets bitten. Would you like to give him a name? Oh, just Buckety, I suppose. Buckety? Yeah. Buckety the Death Adder. Yeah. <laughs> Our little Death Adder, Buckety, is going to come back with me. Uh, he'll begin a process there where we milk him fortnightly to extract his venom. We'll send that off to be made into any venom and he'll help save a life. This is it, Buckety. 250 new mates. Buckety the Death Adder is about to meet his new housemates. In these three rooms, we have 250 of the world's most toxic snakes. King Browns, Taipans, Tiger Snakes. And we milk them, we extract their venom. We send that off to be made into any venom and we save lives. But before Buckety moves in, Tim must milk the lethal snake. This is the dangerous part. You need absolute concentration, absolute focus. One slip up and you're bitten. bitten. Oh, look at that, good boy. As Soon as Buckety sees that vial, I think he thought it was my arm and it was just a grab. Look at that, that's enough in there to kill a couple of grown men. It takes at least dozens of milkings to make one vial of any venom. If you were bitten by a death adder, you might need 10 vials of any venom to recover. That's a hell of a bite. I'm glad that's not me. What happens from here is we actually freeze dry this venom and we send it off to the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories. They turn it into any venom. This is our job done. Off you come, mate. You had a bit of attitude. Buckety will now be a permanent part of the park's venom production unit and will be milked once a fortnight. Australia has 10 out of 10 of the most toxic land snakes on Earth. We have 2,000 bites every year, 300 of which receive any venom. Can you imagine how many people could die if this place didn't exist? Sleep tight, mate. You did a good job today. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.